Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidi. Alaikum salam, rahmatullah. Sayyidi, is disease like cancer, are they caused by the jinn? Disease like cancer caused by the jinn. Everything Allah is under Allah's might and majesty. So it's permission always is from Allah So every fitna that comes upon this earth is a permission from Allah Not a township or community is destroyed but it's that it's in the hands of Allah So other cultures were teaching that, no the, the devils bring destruction so that the devils taught that to show that they had power. And that's why you go into their places of worship, they fear the devil instead of fearing Allah. Oh, all their movies too, the devil's gonna come, he's gonna ruin everything, he's gonna destroy everything. What are you talking about? Can't do nothing unless Allah gives permission. So, wa hawla wa la quwwata illa So that's his movies he makes. If we could make movies it would be different, it would show a different understanding. So they go out they make a fitna but it's with the permission of Allah that they're allowed to approach that servant. So if they're doing good and they're in training Allah lets certain ones to come and train that person and they approach, they get too close and then they have to train, they have to use their, their training, their taweez, their zikr, their washing, their wudu, their salah and everything that Allah has brought. Sayyidina Muhammad has brought and that awliyaullah are continuously disseminating. They do all of those like sparring, so they're practicing, practicing, practicing. Then there are others whom is through other and many, many different reasons they're under attack. It can be generational attacks that they did something and their family lineage is now at war with these unseen creatures and they attack them horrifically until Allah write for that servant to go to guidance and those whom can intercede for that difficulty if Allah warrants it, wants it. So it's all under Allah's hands. So we, we don't need to focus on some creature trying to harm us, give us this, give us that. It is uh, written by Allah and sicknesses that come they are a cleansing. And never attribute your sickness to something holy. You didn't get sick by coming to a spiritual event. That's unholy thinking. Means that you got sick because you needed to be sick and that you needed to be cleaned. So never you attribute the bad to Allah. That's what shaitan did. So Allah made me to not reply. You attribute the good to Allah and the bad to me. Alhamdulillah Allah gave me a life to go to the zikr but because of my bad character I need to be clean. You turn around and say, oh I got sick at the zikr, what are you talking about? You're attributing your badness to Allah That's what shaitan did. So it means the adab and what you say and what you talk and who you talk to is be very careful because it gives a bigger sickness of the head when you expose yourself. So it means our life is about everything is good coming from Allah If Allah gave me a life to come and do my zikr tonight and I get hit by a bus outside, that was my destiny. That was my bad character, I got hit but at least He gave me the ability to do zikr that night and granted me a paradise. Imagine you die in that way, huge paradise, they died in the way of zikrullah, great versus He died at work. The, who cares about that? It means the hikmah and wisdom and everything. It's the adab of how you think of everything in life. Then it, it gives the understanding of your heart and the condition of your understanding inshaAllah. Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Um uh, Can you speak a little bit more on the concept of reincarnation? Like what do you think if a Muslim like me who thinks they have been reincarnated back to life over seven times in a span of 3300 years and say, I am Pharaoh's wife or different people? 
I say that you 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 e email help me at <laughs> nurmuhammad.com. Yes, it's, uh, we don't want to make things personal, but yeah, that's the problem with with people who have uh, a jinn attachments because they live 1500 years, 2000 years and they begin to put their philosophy onto people, experiences, names, events in life. So like those fortune tellers that come on TV, I'm communicating with your son and he's saying, Mom, you remember my red shoes in the closet? Where, where did you put them? You think somebody in heaven is talking about their red shoes in the closet? No, but there's a Karin who has no authority and he's roaming around your house all day long. So of course he knows your household events, he knows these types of dunya things. Anyone communicating from the heavens which you haven't seen unless it's through holy chains, we talk about paradise, we talk about the azab of the grave, we talk about so many much more important things. So these are the, these, these creatures playing with people and they're not real. And uh, reality of your light and your soul and where Allah has placed your soul, that's something completely different and that's not for normal people. So the, the confusion on reincarnated and Allah doesn't need to, to recycle anything. Now your light has an existence and can be existing in many different dimensions and realities but you have no understanding of that until you achieve the levels of perfection and good character. So without that then it must be jinn that are interfering and talking. So we've had people come and say, oh this person he's, I think he's had many, many spiritual experiences and he came and sat down he was telling me he's Jesus, that he was Moses and that he was everyone, anyone he could think of he said he was. What did that tell you? You think this is Jesus Christ is sitting there? No, it means that something is playing with him and you know making all of his feelings and emotions and every type of uh, mental issue to come out. So those are dangerous situations, that's why immediately you get a taweez, immediately you begin to meditate. As soon as you meditate and, and connect in our system of connection, you have to ask for the madad of the shaykhs. If you meditate without that, well then it's like taking your car, park it in the worst neighborhood possible put loads of cash in your pocket and just walk around. You're going to be attacked because you just open yourself up into a heedless state. So when you ask for the madad, you're asking for very powerful awliya. Where kunu ma sadiqeen Allah says in Qur'an because everything is based on Qur'an. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa kunu ma sadiqeen, itaqullah. Have taqwa, have consciousness and kunu ma sadiqeen keep the company of sadiqeen, truthful in their word and in their action. Well Allah doesn't care about physical so there must be a way to spiritually keep their connection and that's the madad. That this salihin, Ya Rabbi let me to always be in their association and their nazar upon me and dress me from their light. As soon as you ask for their madad, anything nefarious around you is going to ask you stop doing that. And they'll stop you from your madad, they'll begin to try to hurt you from your madad because they don't want that shaykh's light to begin to come and first clean that creature out of the area. So the madad has an immense cleansing. As soon as you become good at the madad, you're bringing the light of the shaykh into the environment, into the room, into the house which is an immense cleansing because anything nefarious is going to run from those lights. That's why the system is in place inshaAllah. As Salaam dear Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa What can someone do with physical illness only to pray for it and ask for Shaykh's dua and is going to see a doctor for it, lack of iman? No, go to a doctor definitely, always take medicine and your medical advice serious. Spiritual only goes after that. So you do your spiritual practices once you've taken your medical experience. We said before that it's body, mind and soul. If your body is off, this spiritual practices is, is very difficult unless you're very advanced because the pain doesn't let you to concentrate, there's a deficiency in the physicality. So the physicality needs the medicines that people want to give. These things that they're giving to people is not medicine, it's not a cure for anything, they even admit it's not a cure. So cure is something else. When you take medicine that takes away a condition, that's a relief from Allah 
when you take a hypothesis from somebody and put a poison into your body that isn't a relief and is not a cure for anything, that's something different. But you have to take care of the body and if your mind is not well, you can't sit and meditate when your mind is broken. So you have to go fix and take the medicine for the mind. So all of them have to be fixed. Then you can spiritually begin to meditate and contemplate, do the zikrs, do the awrads. And when sickness comes, you do your zikrs, your awrads, so that Allah lessens it and makes it to be something of an ease, something instead of being horrifically difficult, Allah can make it to be just a small little flame that can be blown out inshaAllah. And that's again, that's the whole talk was tonight, is that with all these difficulties coming, give, support, do, participate, be known by the shaykh, by all of the support. People are now putting out 300, 400 shares on every Facebook video that goes out. Well that's a tremendous, means 300 people shared the feed. Then imagine how that multiplies, same with the YouTube. Now they're up to about 300, 280 comments, 350 viewers and hundreds of shares. If everybody shared and shared multiple places, that's a, a khidmat. Our life is about service. If you can't make the talk, which you don't need to, share the talk, doesn't cost anything. And if you make a tremendous amount of money, give, otherwise that money become a poison and a curse upon somebody. If they don't have money, alhamdulillah. They're safe from any type of difficulty, Allah won't question them. But you've got a finger still. If you don't have a finger, you can go like this, take the button and go, save, share, share. So nobody has an excuse. That is such an easy process of khidmat. But it's just the willingness of people wanting to. If you want to, there's a will, there's a way. Allah will open a way for the person. So imagine now, uh, after 350 viewers within an hour after the broadcast, it's up to 1200. If 1200 immediately started to share, there's thousands of people that would be exposed to the teaching on each broadcast. And that's what, it, what counts. It can't be just us, you know, trying to boost it, can continuously have, you know, 10 people trying to put it. But if everybody had the care and the caring within their heart, then imagine what could be conquered. Prophet with a handful of companions changed the entire world. That's, that's immense. A, a yatim, child from the desert has on Ramadan two billion people fasting in his honour. They never saw Allah, they never met Allah It's Allah's honour to Sayyidina Muhammad that whatever you taught your people until the day of judgment to honour you, I will make sure they do it. Because many other nations were given the same order and none of them kept it. So it means if people want to and they want a way to do it, Allah will provide it an ability. And it's just a handful that can change and to, to, to change and to do things. So alhamdulillah everybody puts now a nice ambient soundtrack on their talks. Because you put out a superior product then everybody has to also compete with that, that's good. They put in a nice thumbnail, well that's good. You have to raise the status of people that this is a Muhammadan kingdom. You can't just put out nothing, you have to put out the best of what you have to the faces of these other people so that they understand the Muhammadan nation is very powerful, very uh, artistic, very knowledgeable. You know they have a wealth of experience, they have to come out and show it. Right? This brings the azimat of Allah and the tashrif and the honour of Sayyidina Muhammad We came into this town and they were doing a milad but was always a fundraiser. And we said, no, no, this is the birth of the most blessed human being and soul of all creation. Put it like the Naat says, in a huge grand way so that other people see how much you love and respect your Prophet so that they will respect. But if they see you don't respect, oh, how are they going to respect? That's why when you respect your children, you show good character, other people will respect them. When you have this love for Prophet this is the lands in which to do that, in the western land. So people who are in the eastern countries, they already are Muslim. So they have to support us to propagate that love here. 
that have huge milads, huge milads. Uh, Yemen milad, okay, they're all Muslim there. But to have a huge milad in Vancouver and Los Angeles, that's significant. That's what's important. Not Pakistan, there's only 150 million Muslims. You should have a milad with 150 million people. They send a milad with, you know, 100,000 people, bravo, but you have 150 million people already there. But here do it. That's what, you know, that's what the tashrif and, and to raise the flag and that's why it's so important the work that's being done on the west side. This western side of the world is to raise the flag and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and those whom have that love to bring their whole situation up. Make your products better, make your thumbnails more beautific, make your talks more beautific. And then talk about these subjects of the Muhammadan reality. MashaAllah all of them now making videos on Rumi and, and all these beautiful things. Alhamdulillah, it's good. Uh, as Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. What should us online followers do when we hear scratching and screams at the door, especially if we start to feel fear? Yeah, the connection. Online people, I, I'm sure you've noticed, are experiencing a lot of good experiences. They have very strong connections because the farther they are, the more sincere their practices because they're not being handicapped by physical presence of the shaykh. They're at a distance, they're yearning to connect, they're really trying, they do try and they have very beautific experiences. That's what's important. So Allah is the one whom gives. When the person sits and starts to do their practices, that presence will begin to dress upon them. Those who made, that was the whole talk. If you rely on physical and the shaykh says that, stay here, we're going to be safe, but your physical is not really spiritually matching. You actually say, no, I think you're making me sick, I'm going to go run home. Hmm, okay. But that's not somebody who spiritually connected would say that. Spiritually connected would begin to feel the presence of the shaykh and that type of calamity the shaykh would appear in front of him because his faith is there, right? But the one in the physical presence actually wants to run away and blame him. No, I got sick because I came to where you were. Oh, that's okay. That's something different. So you understand the danger of, of only physicality. But the ones whom have a spiritual connection, the connection become more and more and more powerful. If a calamity should occur, it begins to immediately feel the presence and see the presence of the shaykh. Because at that time Allah there's nothing to be hidden. When these events begin to happen, then Allah when they show themselves, this is a permission for only Allah and those whom are associated with them to be given their authority to begin to show themselves. Now the game is just waiting. They're waiting for these dajjals to show themselves. And they can't show themselves until they inoculate everyone. Because if they show themselves, people will die being near them because they're dirty, right? So you have to inoculate a population in which to tolerate their presence. So once they get to the number they want, well what's going to happen? Lo and behold they're going to appear. So, wow, we just saw them, the ship is landing, they're coming to talk. Because now they want to come now close to people, enough of the people have been inoculated and that's their plan. Once they show themselves then Allah inshaAllah open the game and then it's on, inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. We talk about the jinn and negative energy attacking us and ways to protect ourselves. What do we do if it's reached a stage where the jinn has already taken full control? Run. How do we cleanse? <laughs> <laughs> How are you typing if he's taking full control? <laughs> yes. that, that doesn't make sense. That's when people come and say, Shaykh, I'm so possessed, I'm so possessed. I say, look, if you don't really know what possessed is, if you're possessed, if you make intention just to come and see me, they'll start to rip you where you are, literally cut you into your skin. They won't let you come and sit here and talk to me. So, it's just your imagination. Those whom are in, in true, true immense difficulty, they're held hostage by these creatures and they have a very, very physical experiences. The rest is just imaginal and uh, I think in some Eastern culture they like to blame <laughs> everything on the jinn. 
your business is bad or Jin made our business bad. No, maybe you're just a bad businessman. A school is bad, my kids are not uh, succeeding in school as a Jin. No, it's just your kids don't study. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it's a sort of default to blame everything on these spiritual creatures, but no, it's not that. Uh, Masha, there's a new person that's saying, Mashallah, uh, you're the first Muslim I really connected with. Mashallah. We really love you. Thank you. Love you too. Thank you, Allah. Bless you. Bless all those who are online, all those who are here, all those whoever they are, watch us later and rebroadcast. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzata amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. In the sharaf al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ali wa sahbihi kiram, qalam al shaykhina fi tariqat al ashbandiyat al aliyya wa sayr wa saddahtina wa siddiqina al fatiha. الصلاة والسلام